to welcome two professionals here who have wonderful talents and wonderful expertise for us tonight. For those at home, you're watching the uh, monthly meeting, third Wednesday, third Monday of the month, 6.30 at Los Angeles Hall of the Eastern Range. Uh, come at 6.30 and enjoy a luscious, lovely supper, and 7 o'clock the meeting starts. So, uh, I want to introduce first our guest, Terry, Kerry, <laughs> and um, <laughs> no relation to the composer. <laughs> and uh, we are so delighted to have you here. Thank and you. her practice is called Envision. And it's a psychological counseling practice, and perhaps you could go into it and explain a little bit more. Sure. <laughs> and the, the other person who's here is Julie Lovely, and she indeed is. And she has a horse, uh, she's, she's a horse person, but she does wonderful things with the horses. She helps people with therapeutic um, experiences, people who might have come back from Afghanistan with emotional problems, psychological problems, <coughs> and those who have had trauma in their lives. And the horses provide therapy, comfort, and helps them to heal. And so, uh, Julie, what is the name again? It's Wild Hearts Horses for Heroes. Wild Horses for Heroes. Hearts. Hearts. Horses for Heroes. Horses for Heroes. Okay. So anyway, she will get into that later. But first, let us all welcome Carrie Ann Wagner, who's the daughter of our very <laughs> own Camel and Cole. Thank you. You want me to just stand here, or should I stand back here? Preference? <laughs> okay. So yeah, hi, I'm Carrie Ann Wagner, um, a licensed mental health counselor. Uh, I specialize in um, working with people with post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. Um, so recently, um, I have been working with Smith Farm at Borderland to develop a program to work with veterans with PTSD. Um, so that's why I'm here to talk about that today. Um, I do have a private practice in Easton, um, started about a year ago, a little under a year ago, um, where I do specialize in people with, seeing people with PTSD. Um, so the important thing about veterans, I think, is what we want to focus on today, is that the veterans go off to war, right? They, they fight for us, they fight for our freedom, you know, they serve our country and they serve for us. And then they come back with you know, physical wounds, they come back with emotional wounds, um, and they're not prepared um, to come back into civilian life after that. They're not prepared to deal with um, going back to their family, going back to the community. Um, so oftentimes they do have PTSD, they might have depression, they might have addiction, other issues that are coming up because they're trying to learn how to deal with everything. So what we're hoping to do um, at Smith Farm is to open this program where shooting for September right now, um, so that we can have an intensive outpatient program for veterans with PTSD, um, veterans who um, have served, have, um, have had combat experience. Um, so this is what we're hoping to start, um, to help them get more or gain more support, um, because there isn't as much support as there should be for them when they're coming home. So that we can support our heroes, that's why we're doing this. So um, what we developed as a, a holistic program. So using some traditional methods of psychotherapy groups, um, as well as yoga, nutrition, um, in the form of cooking classes, um, different things like this. There's um, a reflection. So basically I can tell you what happens. It's a 10 week group um, all together, which is longer than a lot of other groups. But I feel that's important because sometimes the groups are two weeks. People feel great while they're in the group and then the group ends, and then they go back to where they were before. Um, so we're hoping if we have a longer program that this will keep it going for them afterwards. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're gonna have a 10 week program that's three days a week. And in this program, one day they're going to have, say a psychotherapy group and another form such as yoga um, to help them with emotion regulation um, and exercise. Um, and the groups are going to help them learn how to not only how to interact better with other people in their families and in the communities, but it's going to give them a better perspective on how their actions have changed, how their thoughts have changed, how their feelings have changed um, 
from how they were before to how they are now, and also everyone else in their family, the ones that they're close to, their close family and friends, how they might have changed or how they might be viewing them differently or acting differently towards them than they did before. Um, so um, there's going to be a lot of things addressed there. There's going to be a morning reflection group in which people have, it's a silent reflection, like 15 minute quick group so that they can take a moment to journal and say, this is where I am right now today. This is what I'm feeling. This is my goal for the day. This is what I want to accomplish. Now, for some people in this type of program situation, really is just getting through the day is what they want to accomplish. Um, that's okay. <laughs> that's still a goal for that day, right? Um, so you go through, so we have the psychotherapy group, and then we have something like yoga, and then we have a lunch break, and then we have um, the cooking piece of it is only going to be one, one day. Um, and then at the end, you have the afternoon reflections were a bit longer, and at this point, they get to share with the other veterans, which has proven to work very well when you get to talk to other people who've been through similar experiences, um, that they will sit there and talk to each other about, this is what I have learned today. This is what I'm taking home with me today. Um, this is how I feel now versus how I felt at the beginning of the day. Um, and they get to share this with each other. Um, and then we'll end with the meditation. So hopefully all the good pieces is what we're trying to take out of that to reflect on that and have them focus on that. So hopefully when they leave for the rest of the day, they take that with them. Um, and what we've ended up doing is a Monday, Wednesday, Friday type of program. So Monday, that might be a Monday type of program. And then on Friday, um, it might have still the morning and afternoon reflection piece at the beginning and end of the day. But lunch this time is a little bit longer because it's a cooking class or a cooking demo um, where they learn how to cook healthy recipes that have been approved by a registered dietitian or um, someone who's registered in that field, nutritionist registered in that field. Um, so this is what we're looking for, is for them to be able to then do a yoga class, um, do something holistic like that. And then in the Wednesday, what we have is our next speaker, Julie Lovely. She already has a program in itself, but what we're doing is she's going to incorporate her program um, into ours. So, so say a Wednesday would be her program twice a year. And the other two seasons, um, it's not set in stone yet, but is a music program, a songwriting type of program for veterans. So she'll talk about her piece. So I won't get into that at this moment, her Wild Hearts, Horses for Heroes. She'll talk about that a little, in a little bit. And also we're hoping that um, Southeastern Music School, <clears throat> School of Music, um, that they will be in on this as well. They're, they're currently working on their songwriting program so that they can also help us as an alternative um, for the seasons when it's too cold or too hot for the horses. <laughs> Um, so um, this is basically what our program looks like using all types of methods to help people learn how to feel better, how to communicate better with other people, how to feel better themselves with that personal sense of self-satisfaction -satisfa that they might not be feeling anymore in their lives. Um, the idea of a program like this is because somebody isn't functioning that well anymore, right? They come back, they're not functioning within society, they might not feel the same about themselves, they may not know where they fit in, um, and it generally is for people, oh, it generally is for people who um, <clears throat> who feel like they're, you know, they're not able to work anymore, maybe, maybe not able to attend college, um, might be struggling with interactions with their family, um, other close friends, um, other people in the community, they might be struggling, um, you know, they might be pushing other people away, um, and that, that is something that tends to happen, is that they'll push other people away. Um, they feel like nobody understands what they're going through. Um, and we want to be able to stop this from happening, and we also want them to know that there are other veterans who have been through similar experiences, and that you can talk to them, and you can help each other through this as well. Um, so in a nutshell, that's what we're aiming for, is to help them so they can um, have that um, improved sense of personal self-satisfaction and um, improve their interactions within their families and um, within the community. And at some point, um, there will be a family piece that's added on. Now, the family piece is addressed in the groups, in the therapy groups. And of course, if it comes up at some point in time and it's addressed, that's certainly welcome to be addressed. Um, but there will, at some point, we do plan on adding in another family piece where the family can actually come in and do something um, with them as well. Um, so I don't know if there's a lot of questions about what we're doing or if everybody knows Smith Farm at Borderland or anything like that. Feel free. <laughs> How are you going to get your population 
compliance to the veterans? Well, that is one source is through the VA. The Smith Farm at Bordelin has a connection with the Brockton VA and the larger scope of the VA in this area. Um, so we'll be looking to them. Um, there's a few other sources that they have that they'll be looking to, to see um, who might be um, eligible for this program. And the program is actually a free program. It's going to be run completely, scholarships, grants, things like that. It's not going through insurance. Um, it's something that we hope to offer for free for the veterans. Hold on one second. Yeah, uh, what condition is Smith Farm uh, in to <coughs> run this program? Well, right now, Smith Farm is still in the process of renovating their farmhouse. And I can't tell you an exact date when it will be finished. We're hoping this program will roll out in September. We don't know for sure whether the farmhouse will be done then, but we have other places that have offered, such as Oaks Ames Memorial Hall, um, to allow us to use their space <clears throat> in the meantime while that program is still, well, while the farmhouse is still being renovated. Um, so not a definite timeline, but we hope our program to start in September, but I can't guarantee that the Smith Farmhouse will be finished by then. <laughs> Yes. How, how many people will you serve at a time? Mm -hmm. So if it's a 10 week program mm -hmm. in a year, how many people would that be? It's meant to be a very small group of people so that they feel comfortable talking and opening up. So it's only six people at a time, which would be, what's that, 24 people a year with four programs that we hope to run per year. And with those groups, is it men and women together? No, we wouldn't do men and women together. We. We'll see how many people are interested in how many are female and how many are male. We expect there to be more male than female, um, but we'll see who is interested. And we were hoping that we could do at least one female group, at least one female group per year, but we were kind of going on the assumption that there will be more men um, going to this program than female. Um, as far as combat veterans, there are still more males than females going into combat, although there are females in combat, so don't get me wrong. <laughs> um, so yes, we will. We are planning on holding groups for both, but not together, not men and women together. Isn't it true that you devised this program yourself, that it's totally original and there's not another one of its kind, and you are a progressive innovator? <laughs> well, this type of program is innovative, but I am not, we're definitely, me, I, myself and Smith Farm are not the only people to have a program similar to this. Um, home base in um, Boston, actually, in Charlestown. Um, they have similar programs, not necessarily the same length or the same exact program, but they have similar holistic type programs. Um, there are a few um, that are starting to pop up. And I think the reason behind that is um, what they're finding right now is that the programs are effective that are there, but only so effective. So what they're saying is that people are not going into remission from PTSD. They might be controlling their symptoms, but not going into remission. So People continue, like us, uh, you know, continue to do more research, try other programs, try other methodologies, um, such as yoga and things like that, to see if something else will be more effective than what's already out there. And one follow-up question. What um, led you to devise and, and originate this program? Well, um, I work with PTSD as a specialty, so I've seen many people, veterans and civilians um, who have PTSD and are really having trouble functioning with their lives, with their families, with their communities, um, isolating, have depression, have eating disorders, addiction, um, many other issues. So it was, was something that led me to definitely want to help this population. Um, and I found out that Smith Farm was in fact wanting to help veterans, that that was what Smith Farm at Borderland was all about, uh, is wanting to have programs for veterans. So I became involved with them. So if one wants to have a one-on-one -on -one therapy with you, then um, can you repeat where your office is yes. and your telephone number? Yes. If, if somebody did want to have one-on-one -on -one therapy with me, I am at Envision Counseling, which is on 448 Turnpike Street, which is 138 in Southeastern. My phone number is 508-219-2904. 219-2904. Yes. All right. Thank you. <laughs> so, thank you so much. You're going to do say? Okay. <laughs> and here uh, comes Julie Lowley, her partner in crime. Uh, and again, the name of her uh, practice is Horses for Heroes. 
uh, Wild Hearts Therapeutic Equestrian Program. So Julie, we want to welcome you, and wonderful that you're interfacing uh, with uh, Carrie, and we appreciate you coming and sharing your story to us at the Grange, but also to many, many people at home. And please give us your information and how they can contact you also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's really such an honor to be here. Um, I'm Julie Lovely. I'm the Executive Director of Wild Hearts Therapeutic Equestrian Program. And we've been around since 2009. It's our 10th anniversary this year. We have two sides to our program. One is equine facilitated psychotherapy and the other side is Wild Hearts Horses for Heroes. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. So Wild Hearts Horses for Heroes was started about five years ago, and we work with veterans who have post-traumatic stress, um, both men and women, um, all war eras. We run a 10-week program twice a year, in the spring and summer, and then again in the fall. Um, they come for two hours every Friday morning, and they learn how to communicate with our horses. So our program is based on the principles of natural horsemanship, which is something that came um, sort of into fruition in the 1970s. And it was a, a different way of training horses as opposed to breaking a horse through um, fear and intimidation and pain. Um, natural horsemanship works with a horse the way they communicate with each other in the wild. So we're communicating with horses through our own body language and trying to build a trust and a partnership with that horse to gentle them as opposed to breaking them. So in the, at the time it was quite revolutionary. Um, now you see it all the time, it's quite common. Um, so our horses, though they are trained, they still have their own personalities, they feel differently every day, so depending on who they're interacting with, um, you might get a very different response from them. Um, one of the things I really hate about PTSD is the word disorder, because really the way your brain reacts to a trauma is really actually quite normal. Um, things like feeling um, disassociated, feeling hypervigilant, um, not trusting anyone. Those are completely normal reactions to a very abnormal situation. And that's what our horses help people who come to our program do, is to feel like themselves again, to learn to trust, to build a partnership, um, to be able to interact with not only um, the horses, but then carry that over to interacting with their family and their friends and within their community. Um, one of the veterans that came to our program said that um, for the first time, the way that horses as fight or flight animals, they're flight animals, um, the way that they react to um, something that startles them made him feel normal for the first time since coming back from combat. Um, the great thing about horses is that because they're so hypervigilant, they can react to something and then go back to being very calm. Um, and that's something that helps people who have been through trauma to learn that not only is their reaction normal, um, but they can go back to a state of relaxation and calm. We work a lot on mindfulness. Um, horses are the just the ultimate definition in, in mindfulness because they are always in the present moment. Um, a horse is not worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. They're not fretting about something that happened yesterday. And when we work with a horse, we have to be in the present moment in order to communicate with that horse. Um, the best thing I can do is to give you some examples of, of things that I've seen with the people who work with our horses. Um, the great thing is that horses don't judge. They just take you at face value. They will interact with you based on the way that you're feeling. They can sense the way that you're feeling as opposed to the way that you're acting on the outside. You're talking about an animal that has survived thousands and thousands of years as a flight animal. So they're not predators and they have survived 
and they've done that because they can sense the intention of a predator and as humans we're predators so when we're working with a horse they can sense our intention regardless of what's going on on the outside um, so I was working with a veteran and he was um, doing some liberty work with a horse in a round pen which means he wasn't connected to the horse through a halter and a lead rope it was just his body language that he was using to ask the horse to walk trot change direction and the horse kept turning towards him and giving him signals that he wanted to come in and be with him and every time the horse would get close to him he would just toss up his hands and send them out around the paddock around the pen galloping and this happened three or four times and so I, I finally asked the person that was working with this horse how come every time the horse comes to you you push him away and all of a sudden a light bulb kind of went on that wait I'm not just doing this with this horse I'm doing this with everybody in my life so you get to see in real time some of the patterns of behavior that you've developed that you may not even realize you're doing um, feelings are hard feelings are hard to feel sometimes we don't even know what we're feeling it's hard to put a name on them um, but horses can really help us to understand exactly what we're feeling because they're mirroring back to us. Whatever input we're giving them, they're mirroring that back to us so we can see right then and there how, our, how we're influencing that horse's behavior. Um, like I said, we work a lot with mindfulness um, and breathing. Um, I'm not a, a good breather. I'm, <laughs> I'm not... I'm not good at meditating. Um, I try, I know it takes practice, but when I'm around a horse, um, I find that if he's breathing calmly, I'm breathing calmly. Um, so there's things that we can practice with a horse that we can take to our everyday lives. Um, and one of the things that I've heard from so many of the people that we work with is that um, they are working with other therapists and they are doing talk therapy. And this um, modality with horses will help to make their sessions with their therapist even more productive. Um, so we find that it's a really good complement to the work that they're doing with other therapists. Um, the program is completely free of charge. We never ever charge veterans. We, um, the, the veterans come to us because um, we have such generous individuals and organizations that support our program. We have five horses, um, three big horses and two miniature horses. And um, if you're a horse person, you know that there is always some veterinary emergency. <laughs> so they're quite expensive, um, but they are our therapists. They're the reason that we're able to work with the veteran population and see so much success. Um, so. If anyone um, knows of someone who might be interested in our program, I do have these flyers. They're also available on our website, our Facebook page, and this is for our May program. Our May program starts on the 3rd. Um, it runs until July for 10 weeks every Friday. Um, we typically have anywhere between 6 and 10 veterans. Um, right now we're at five with a, a little bit more interest of people that haven't quite committed yet. Um, so we always try to make room. We'll try to bring in additional horses if we have to. Um, so we do whatever we can if we have a lot of interest because we really don't want to turn people away. Um, our team, I should mention who our team is, um, myself, I'm an equine specialist in mental health and learning. I have a certification through the Professional Association of Therapeutic Horsemanship. We have a natural horsemanship trainer, Jen Goddard. We also have a um, licensed clinical social worker, Nicole Long, that works with us. And we have some wonderful volunteers. Daniela is one of them who I didn't know was going to be here tonight, but she's fabulous. And we couldn't run this program without the help of wonderful volunteers like her. Um, but I should also mention that our program is not specifically therapy. Um, our social worker does work with the veterans, but she is also a horse person. Um, so we really lead with the horsemanship. We let the horses teach people about themselves. 
Um, the focus is learning to work and communicate with our horses from the ground. There's no riding involved. And um, if something comes up where someone wants to get a little bit deeper into something, our therapist is available. Um, so we have um, both facets covered. Um, you can really get as, as deep into it as you want, or you may just really want to focus on the horsemanship. Um, so I also want to mention that our benefit dinner is coming up on June 8th, and this is one of the ways that we raise a lot of funds to support our program. Um, it is at the East Bridgewater Commercial Club this year, celebrating our 10th anniversary. And our two miniature horses will be there, Jimmy and Bootsy. And um, it's going to be a great night. We're having a barbecue. One of our veterans who's been working with our two miniatures for about a year and a half, she's going to be there doing a demonstration with these two little guys. Um, so does anyone have any questions? Where, sorry. Go ahead. Where are you actually located? Where are the horses? Sure, we're in West Bridgewater, so it's at my property. Um, I have a small farm in West Bridgewater. It's actually very close to here. We're right on the line of Southeastern. Yep. Um, I, I have uh, rabbits and dogs, so I, I know the difference between a predator and a, and a, uh, a prey animal, mm -hmm. and I think it's incredibly perceptive how you're using the horses. But um, my, my uh, vet uh, runs a program, or sponsors a program, that uses dogs for uh, service men with PTSD. Yeah. Um, how do you think the temperament of the animals would affect how a program yeah, so I get that question a lot um, because dogs and horses are obviously very different. Dogs are predators, horses are prey animals. Um, and that's not to say that both programs can't certainly help with aspects of post-traumatic stress. I'm a dog person, I love dogs. Um, but dogs will tend to give you that unconditional trust. Um, whereas a horse won't. You really have to work to build a relationship with a horse because they are not automatically going to trust you because it's in their instincts not to. Um, of course, horses are domesticated and they all have varying levels of, of you know, personality and just innate trust. Um, we have because we have five horses they all have different personalities so some are are much more trusting and great at teaching boundaries because i'm thinking of echo <laughs> because they want to be really close to you and we we kind of call him a big dog because he is just wants to be right on top of you and you know cuddling with you but he weighs a thousand pounds so we can't do that so he's great at teaching boundaries and leadership um, whereas uh, another one of our horses, Izzy, um, he's not so trusting. And so, you know, you really have to work to build a partnership with him because he's not automatically going to give you that. So it's a little bit different with dogs because they are predators and we're predators. So um, a horse does look to us for leadership. As, as a herd of two, you and a horse, they look to us for leadership. Mm -hmm. Julie, um, do you have to choose certain animals for this project? So what kind of temperament do you look for in a horse to? So this is the this is the great thing about a program like this, especially where we work from the ground with these horses. Um, I used to teach therapeutic riding, and you absolutely had to have a certain kind of horse for therapeutic riding. It needed to be very steady you know, wasn't going to be reactive, um, you know, you could trust that if there was a loud noise or something that startled him, he was very much going to, you know, hold it together. Um, but with the horses that we work with from the ground, we're able to work with all different personalities. There's some really fa fabulous programs um, out west, and they work with wild mustangs. So, um, you don't need to necessarily have to have you know, a trained horse or a horse of a certain age. Um, one of the reasons why I love these types of programs is because horses, as they age, um, 
they never age out of a program like this because it's, it's beneficial for them just as much as it's beneficial for the people that are working with them. Any more questions? Sure. What, what do you find are the long-term positive effects for this kind of program? Yeah. So what we aim is for people to take the skills that they learn with the horses and be able to transfer them over to their everyday lives. So um, from what we've gathered from responses from the people that have been part of our program, it's one of the most transformative programs that they've been through. And they've tried you know, various modalities. And um, it's really helped them to become more productive in their everyday lives. So somebody who was you know, really housebound and didn't really go many places and um, came to our program and took a leap because he really didn't want to come, and he did, um, and he continues to come, has been able to take the fact that he can trust people within the safe environment and branch out to other aspects where he can you know, go out and feel comfortable. Um, we've talked to people that have been able to um, have more honest conversations with their spouses and their children and their families. So they're recognizing their own patterns of behavior and they're able to um, have more productive conversations with the people in their lives. And one of our veterans said that it helped, when he was working with one of our horses, we were working through an obstacle course and the horse was really afraid of a balloon that we had in the, in the ring. And he was working to get the horse to go past the balloon and you know not jump past it and not be afraid of it. And um, he said it really helped him to understand what his wife was dealing with, with his own behavior. So it really helped him to see her perspective, whereas before he just, he just couldn't see it. So the horse really helped him. She could tell him all day, you know, what she was feeling, but it was when he saw it from the perspective of trying to help this horse overcome his fear, he could see what his wife was going through. Mm -hmm. Yep. I have a question. Um, sure. So for those people who are participants in your program, the collective program, um, many of those, or all of those, are referred to you by the Area Veterans Administration. Do you have, uh, do you have people who, who know how to contact you? The day? Because, because the interaction is di difficult for some. Right. Do you have veterans that reach out to you? Also, because I'm assuming that a good portion of your, your the, the, I don't want to use clients, but those who participate are referred by the Veterans Administration. But is there an ability to find a way to reach out to homeless veterans? Because mm -hmm. I feel personally that's the way, that's the, the greatest need is for people who don't have jobs, people who right. don't have family. Right. Yeah, so the majority of our veterans um, up to this point have come through relationships that we've built with the vet centers, um, the Brockton VA, and then um, veterans who um, are part of the VA system. So, for example, the, um, the woman who is going to do the demonstration with these two miniature horses, she's part of the vet to vet program at the Brockton VA. Um, so. Uh, she'll refer veterans. Um, we have a great relationship with the Warwick Vet Center, one of the counselors there. Um, he actually brought us our very first two veterans, um, and he comes up with veterans. He drives them up every, every session. Um, we've also been talking with um, the HUDVASH program, part of the, um, the Housing and Urban Development um, I'm trying to remember what VASH stands for, Veterans Assistance. I can't remember the rest of it. Um, but they work with veterans who are homeless um, in transition. So we actually met with the people, the counselors, to tell them about our program um, and ran a little mini session for them so they could see what we do. So we're hoping that we'll be able to make some inroads that way. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? 
Would you be kind enough to tell us your uh, website? Well, she had one your, question. Uh, email address. Are you sure? <laughs> How do you get a guy that's been in hardcore combat and you approach them? I mean, I'm a big time horse person, so I know. Mm -hmm. How do you approach them about like, well, these horses are going to help you? Yeah, so that's where I think the peer-to-peer -peer is so important to have veterans who have been through our program talk to other veterans. Um, or, like I said, the counselors um, who have been to our program with other veterans. It took over a year to get one of our veterans to us. And um, once he came, he hasn't left. He's loves it, absolutely loves it. He comes every single session. He completely looks forward to it every, every session. Um, so that's it, when other, vet, other veterans trust other veterans. Um, and I'm not a veteran, and I can say all day that, you know, this has helped me, this has helped lots of people, but um, that's why we feel it's so important to have people who are thinking that this might be something for them talk to the veterans who have been through our program um, because then they can hear firsthand what it's done for them. What information is important for those who might want to volunteer in your program? So we are in the process of putting together a new volunteer training program that Danielle is actually part of. <laughs> Um, we're at the very beginning stages of that. We don't have a lot of vet, uh, a lot of people that volunteer in the actual program. Um, we have three staff members, and we really just have one or two people that are um, very experienced horse people um, working directly with our veterans. We have lots of opportunities to help us with our fundraising, um, but to work directly in the program, um, we have limited spots for that. So if you have significant horse experience, um, then you, we'd certainly love to have you. Um, and like I said, we're putting together a volunteer training, so we'll eventually have that. Um, but I also should mention if anyone knows of someone who is interested in the, the program, participating in the program, our application is very, very simple. Um, we don't require a lot of detailed information. We just need contact information. And um, we have a, an optional section on the back that asks for diagnosis and any medications, um, anything you want to tell us that might help us to create um, you know, a safe environment for you. But we don't um, require anyone to you know, tell their life story to participate in our program. Um, the other thing is you actually, um, you do not have to be in good standing with the VA um, because we know there are a lot of veterans who may have what they call bad paper and we don't turn any, anyone away for that reason. So if you have served in any capacity, you qualify for our program. And your website and your email? Um, my website is wildheartstherapeutic.org and we're also on Facebook. And my email address is jlovely at wildheartstherapeutic.org. Okay, so it's wildheartstherapeutic.org, and it is jlovely, L-O-V-E-L-Y, at wildheartstherapeutic.org. Julie Lovely, thank you. It was wonderful. Appreciate your being here, and especially your partnering with uh, uh, Carrie. Fabulous. Thank you. <coughs> Wonderful that the two of you got together. Thank you. Thank you. To the audience at home, we hope you've enjoyed the program. Uh, this is Priscilla Alm um, uh signing off for today. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we will see you uh, on the third Monday of no, June. No. May. And it's the start. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I'm just going to do it because Rose Galeno, is that right? Rose Galeno? Rosa. Rosa. Rosa Galeno, who we all know is, is, is quite a wonderful cook, chef, and uh, interesting personality. And she's agreed to come and share her story and maybe her food with us on the third Monday of June. So until next month, be well. Thank you for tonight's program. Thank you.